Hi guys, I'm Abby, also known as Abby Maid, and I'm coming to you from my little home studio in Engadine in the southern suburbs of Sydney. I am a Tunisian crochet designer, um, which is a side hustle for me. I still have a full-time job, um, but I learned Tunisian crochet about 12, 13 years ago and basically have been obsessed with it ever since. So I thought that um, being that Tunisian is becoming more popular these days um, and it's starting to bring across knitters to the dark side of Tunisian crochet, I thought I would give you um, some of my top tips and a bit of a, an overview of what you will need to start if you'd like to muck around with Tunisian crochet. Um, so the first thing to know is that <clears throat> it's a cross between knitting and crochet. And that's because unlike crochet, you work the entire row's worth of stitches to bring those loops onto your hook. Whereas in normal crochet, you work one stitch at a time. So you complete that stitch and then you move on to the next one. In Tunisian, you don't do that. You bring loops onto your hook for the entire row and then you bring them off again for the entire row. And that's where it has a parallel with knitting. And full disclosure, I'm not a knitter. So I, I'm aware of the parallels, but I'm not so good with the technical terms. Um, so generally you will need a long hook um, for what you're doing with, with Tunisian and I've got some examples here, but you don't always need a long hook. So for example, the top that you can see me wearing here is my pattern called Diamonds Not Pearls and you can make the whole thing with one of these if you like. Okay, so there's not always a need for that long hook. So this is a standard um, crochet hook with a thumb grip. You can use that for uh, short rows of Tunisian. But if you want to get into longer rows, if you want to make blankets, if you want to work in the round, if you want to work with uh, really long rows, you will need you will need a long hook for that. So if you've never done Tunisian before, um, what I would recommend you starting out with is something similar to this here. Okay, and I will turn the camera around in a little while and give you a better look at these. This one is just a timber hook. See there, there's the hook tip at the front with a stopper on the end, okay? This is the sort of hook that I started out with. Um, and it's versatile, you can do a lot with this. The next thing to get into is, and this one can be used interchangeably with that first one I showed you, is a double-ended hook, okay? So it's, it's the same as that first one, except there's a hook on either end. Now you can use this to work in the round, and you can use it to make flat rows. So if, if you think you'd like to have options, having a double-ended hook is a good thing to do because if you just want to work um, a long row, you can add a stopper to the end of that just with a rubber band or a hair tie. And it does exactly the same thing as this. Uh, the other one I want to show you is a cabled hook. So this one here is, this is an aluminium hook and it has a cable with a stopper attached to the end. So this sort of hook is when you're getting into really long things um, and you can change the length of the cable. This is a Chalgu cable attached to this hook here. Um, so that's really good if you wanna make you know really long blankets with long rows or if you wanna get into clothing where you're working in the round. And there's a couple of different ways of working in the round. You can do it with a double-ended rigid hook or you can do it with a single-ended hook with a cable and you can also um, use a double-ended hook with a cable in the middle. So there are some commercial brands that have a hook at each end. Now the hooks I've just shown you, they're all made by my husband. Okay, so um, a little plug for him. He has a small um, business. It's based mostly on Instagram. You can find him at catch underscore hooks. So CATCH stands for Custom Australian Tunisian Crochet Hooks, and they are completely custom. So I, I use his hooks almost um, exclusively these days. So they're the sorts of hooks that you need, but if you've never worked Tunisian, grab yourself one of these, or if you have access to any other kind of long hook, something along these lines. Now, this one is a six mil hook, and what I'd recommend when you're starting out is to, is to work big. Grab yourself something like something plain like this. This is a 10 ply. This is just a fiddlesticks acrylic. This is what I'm going to use a sample of. Um, and either an 8mm or a 6mm 
hook is a good way to start off with. And just a couple of tips in, in regard to hooks. The pointier, the better. Now, this one here is okay, but you will find, especially some of the more old-fashioned hooks, is that that tip is really blunt. Blunt hooks for beginners aren't very helpful. So you want a nice pointy tip along these lines. Okay. Now I'm going to set this camera up so that you can look down at my hands and I'm going to show you some of the real basics that you need to, uh, to learn to start Tunisian and crochet. And at the end I'll give you some resources where you can uh, find links to my patterns and uh, a bit more information about Tunisian and crochet. And look, I thought I would do this um, little tutorial mostly because you guys are all going to go nuts on yarn for the big wool show this weekend. Uh, and I'd like to give you some some ideas for what you can do with it. So just bear in mind that with, with Tunisian, as compared to say knitting and crochet, it creates a more dense fabric than you might be used to. <clears throat> and so to compensate for that with Tunisian, you need a bigger hook than you would for standard crochet. So when you're looking at yarn labels, uh, yeah, this, this one that I have here actually has a yarn label on the back of it. This is this is the yarn that I was holding up, Fiddlesticks Acrylic. Now at the back here, it's got your hook or your needle size. So it says uh, five millimeters. Um, a five mil hook for this yarn is too little. Okay. So if uh, you always go up uh, based on what's on the yarn label so that your fabric isn't so dense um, and stiff. So one of my ethos with, with Tunisian is that you, uh, I like to achieve drape. What you might see here is nice loosey goosey sort of fabric. This hook, uh, this top is made um, either in a five and a half or a six mil. I think it was a six mil hook. It's been a few years, and this is four ply yarn. Okay, this is a Scapey's Whirl. Um, so I work mostly in four ply because I'm using, um, I'm making clothing. I'm not huge on um, homewares and, and things like that. I, I want to wear my crochet. So. Um, that's the ethos that I, I just want to um, bring across to you is that a bigger hook will result in better drape. Okay, but when you're first starting out, it's a really good idea just to experiment. Make yourself some little swatches and muck around with different stitches and see what kinds of effects you can you can achieve. And uh, if you're enjoying Tunisian, look, I'd love to hear from you. So please reach out through any of my social media handles. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Payhip and Ravelry and Ribbler, all under the username of Abby Maid. So that's A W B E Y M A D E. So I'll flip the camera around and I'm going to show you a few things. So here we are, just with a close up of some of the hooks that I like to use, um, just so that you can see those tips a little bit clearer. So see how all of these hooks are reasonably pointy. This is the sort of hook that I like the best. And you'll see when you get into some more fancy stitches um, why that um, pointy hook size is such a benefit. Um, so even this one, this is a Clover Armour hook or a, a more, um, is reasonably pointy. And that's that's about as blunt as I want to get, uh, but it all does come down to personal preference. So I'll just get these hooks out of the way and I'm going to work with this one. This is a six mil hook, see so it's marked on there. And I've got some yarn here, which is just a fiddlesticks acrylic, nothing fancy. And something that you um, probably should know when starting out with Tunisian is that um, you don't want to start with your cheapest, crappiest yarn, um, unless it's an old faithful that you love to work with. Um, you want to aim for yarn that is not very splitty. Um, this one has a bit of a split in it, but um, it doesn't bug me so much because uh, of my tension is, is nice and loose these days. And what I do find is that uh, beginner's tension for Tunisian, especially if you're a knitter, I found um, can often be quite tight. So the aim of the game is to be loosey-goosey. So what, all I'm going to start with is by teaching you how to do a foundation row and the Tunisian simple stitch and we'll go from there. So we start off with a slip knot on to the hook which you can do using any method that you already know how to do. Um, so I've got my slip knot on the hook and that counts as a loop in the foundation chain. 
And we'll start off with a line of chains. And the number of chains that you start with will determine the width of your row. So I'm going to do uh, not very many here. I might just start with 10. So I'm going to do 10 chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay, now I essentially have 11 loops now, including the one on my hook. Now, the what, what I would recommend everyone doing is see how that chain is nice and loose and I can see all of the different parts of that chain quite clearly. If you work your chain very tightly, your foundation row, which I'm going to show you now, will be hard to make. Now, what I like to do with my foundation rows is I always work into the back bump, which is this little bump sticking out at the top here. In most normal crochet, people will work in, in the front loops, either both or just the top one. Uh, I find with Tunisian that working into the back bump, back bump creates the best effect. Now, for your first foundation chain, you always skip that first chain. Okay, so we've got this loop here, but we skip this one here and we go to the second one. So there's my first back bump. I'm going to miss that one and I'm going to pick up my second one here. And it's as simple as popping the hook through that back bump, yarn over and pull that loop through. Now we don't do any more skipping from here in. We only skip that first one. Okay, and I'm going to pick up the next back bump, hook through, yarn over, and pull that loop through. And then we just continue along that line until we run out of chains. Okay, so how many loops are on the hook? Two, four, six, eight, ten. So you saw that I started off with ten chains, but I started off with a loop on my hook to begin with. So that creates the eleventh, which allows us to skip one. Okay, you can opt to not skip that chain, but as you go, you'll find um, that skipping it creates the best effect along there. Okay, so that's that's called the foundation row forward pass, okay? And it's a forward pass because we've brought all of the loops of the row onto the hook. And the next step that we're going to do is the return pass, which takes all of these loops off the hook. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a standard return pass. There are other ways of doing it, but for a beginner and for this purpose, we do a standard return pass, which always starts with a chain. And in some patterns, you'll see that written as yarn over, pull through one. That's a chain, okay? Now we're going to yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Okay, so a standard return pass is chain one at the beginning and then yarn over, pull through two until one loop is left on your hook, like so. Just lay this flat on the table and I'll explain the anatomy of what's just happened. So along the bottoms here, you can see those little teardrop shapes. That is the chain that we made. And see, by working into the back bump, you have that nice, pretty teardrop shape all the way along, okay? Now, what we've created is we've got a series of vertical lines sticking up here. So those vertical bars are the bars that you create when you make the forward pass. And then underneath it, you can see what's called the return pass chain, which goes through those vertical bars. So the, the horizontal lines along here are the return pass and the vertical bars is the forward pass. And on the back, it looks quite different, but you can still see vertical bars and the chain, it's just from the back. 
Okay, so I'll sh show you a couple of rows. So uh, we're working the Tunisian simple stitch, which is abbreviated as TSS. And when you make Tunisian, you always skip this first stitch here. That is the loop that is remaining on your hook after the return pass, and it becomes the first loop of the next row, which gives us height. So for a simple stitch, we put our hook through the vertical bar. Now I'm right-handed, I'm going from right to left. If you're left-handed, you'll be going from left to right. But see, I've skipped this first one, and I'm going to the second one. So I've put my hook through, yarn over, and pull that loop up. And we continue all the way along the row until we get to the end. Okay, so hook through the vertical bar, yarn over, bring that loop through. Hook through the vertical bar, yarn over, bring that loop through. So Tunisian simple stitch or TSS. Okay, now I'm up to the last one. Now, many beginners will simply pop their hook through the next, that last vertical bar and bring it up. Now, I don't know if you can see that too clearly, but by doing that, we're actually making a bit of a hole. Can you see that? It looks different to the others. So there's a better way. So here's a top tip. And if you learn this at the very beginning of your Tunisian journey, you will never look back. For the last stitch, um, which is sometimes referred to as an edge stitch, which is how, how I refer to it in my pattern, also called the last stitch. We put our hook through the front vertical bar and the back vertical bar. So I'm going to show you. I've grabbed those two loops with my thumb and my middle finger here. And I'm just turning that around. Can you see that? So there's the front vert vertical bar, and then there's another loop sitting in behind it. That's the back vertical bar. So we pop our hook through both of those loops. Okay, yarn over and pull that loop through. And that stops a big ugly hole. And I'm gonna do a few more rows just so that you can see how it will look. Okay, so that's the forward pass. And again, we've got 10 loops on the hook. Now, if you don't want to do any decreasing or increasing, you want to have a uniform number of loops that continue. So I've still got 10. Let's see, two, four, six, eight, 10 loops. Now we do the return pass. So remember, we start with a chain one and then a yarn over, pull through two. And if you can hear a bit of background noise, that is my dog and my six-year-old who have come to visit. Apologies. Okay, so I'm going to do that row again so you can see that nice and clearly. So, sorry, I skipped ahead. Remember, don't work that first row, that first stitch. We skip it to the second vertical bar that you can see. Okay, we're still working simple stitch. All the way along until we get to the last stitch, which is still simple stitch, just picking up an extra bar. So there's the front vertical bar. And if you bring it around slightly, there's the back one just tucked in behind it. So I'll put my hook through both, yarn over and pull up a loop. Return pass, chain one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, until, whoop, not three, you wanna do two, until we get to the end. Okay, so that's Tunisian Simple Stitch. And if you're a complete beginner, you've never tried this before, I recommend um, making yourself maybe some swatches or say a series of washcloths um, to practice your tension. Um, tension's quite important in Tunisian. So if your tension's across stitches, rows, um, it's 
is um, loose in part and tight in others, you'll end up with a fabric that comes in and out quite a lot. Um, I've just got a couple of swatches close to me which I can grab. So the aim of the game, yeah, I'll show you a nice little swatch which is made in a different yarn. This is actually Yarn, yarn Over Yarn by Fiber Arts Shed. Um, so this is a swatch of, of Simple Stitch, which is what I tend to do when I've got new yarn to experiment with. And look, it's exactly the same stitch as this. I've just made it wider. I think I've got 25 stitches on here. It's thinner yarn. So the aim of the game with making something like a swatch is to get nice even tension, okay, all the way along so that you've got pretty even lines along the edges and you want to make sure that your vertical bars all line up that's how you can tell when you're starting out um, whether you've missed a stitch so if you've accidentally skipped one of these your line of vertical bars will stop and what it will do is it will kind of bring it in a little bit like this right and you'll be you'll, your one of your vertical bar lines will just stop and it vanishes or likewise if you've got a new row of vertical bars that just appears out of nowhere you've done an increase somehow so with simple stitch just remember that those they're kind of like train tracks they should be on top of each other all the way along um, as long as you're not wanting to increase or decrease and swatches like this are great to use just as um, a little washcloth if you if you want to make um, something useful out of um, and a good way to use up scrap yarn. And when you're starting out, you could even just make lots of these and turn them into a blanket. And I do recommend doing that um, when you're starting out just so that you can perfect that tension. So I'll just bring my little sample back so I can show you how to do uh, what's called a bind off or finishing. OK. And it's essentially, a, it's called a Tunisian slip stitch, um, which is very similar to a normal crochet um, slip stitch. So the aim of the game here is to have um, a pattern that replicates that, um, uh, that first chain. You can bring my swatch back. You see that they look almost the same. So it's hard to tell the top from the bottom apart. I'll show you how to do that. So we put the hook under the vertical bar, just like simple stitch, yarn over, but we pull two loops off the hook. So it's just like a normal crochet slip stitch. Okay, so it's just that we insert our hook differently to standard crochet. Okay, so hook through the vertical bar, yarn over, pull two loops. Going nice and slowly so that you can see each one. Okay, and when we get to the edge stitch, you insert it just like you did for the previous edge stitches to keep that nice, neat, uniform line. So you hook underneath both vertical bars. Okay, and then to finish, I just yarn over again. I'll cut that and show you. Oop, blunt scissors. And you pull that through and it becomes a little knot there. Okay, so there's my tiny weeny little sample of simple stitch. So I hope that you learned something from my little Tunisian 101 lesson. Um, if you'd like to know more, uh, I have started a small blog on Payhip. Um, there's links to that on my Instagram, Ravelry, and so on. And you, there you can see my pattern. So it's, um, if you just Google Payhip and Abby Made, you'll find it. And there's a couple of blog posts on there. Um, give me a follow if you like, and um, you can learn some more from me over the coming months as I'm increasing my YouTube repertoire. Um, there's also some free patterns that you can download, um, a couple of which have their own YouTube videos, so you can learn directly from the videos. And they're similar to this with my hands, uh, not a lot of fluff, which I know people enjoy. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you and um, enjoy your introduction to Tunisian crochet. Thanks. Bye.